Ultimates are meant to be strong abilities that can easily swing a fight with their power. They're meant to be cool, unique, and should still have counterplay. Well, today, summoners, we're going to be diving into a video breaking down the top 10 ultimates in League of Legends. My name is Crumbs, and I'll be your host for today. While the ults we're listing here aren't always necessarily broken, they are a good mix between cool design, frustrating to play against, and, well, downright OP. We'll be covering each of these ultimates, what they do, why they're strong, and much more. That being said, let's not waste any more time and dive right into the video. Starting us off strong, let's talk about the boy who shattered time. This AP assassin is known for his extremely high burst and strikes fear into AD carries all around the world. Taking a look at his ultimate, Chrono Break, we see just why it's so powerful. Upon leveling this ability, Echo will leave an after image of himself that tracks where he was four seconds ago. When he chooses to activate this ability, he will enter a stasis and will return back to that four second ghost. As he reaches this after image, he will heal himself and release an explosion of magic damage to anyone nearby. This ability is a cool design because it's one of those few abilities in the game that actually deal with time manipulation. On release, this ultimate could easily wipe an entire team with its damage, which made Echo's key strategy to dive in, press Zhonya's, then ult. After its nerfs, it still deals quite a bit of damage while also healing Echo a decent amount. When you're facing this champion, it can feel impossible to kill him and if you're not careful, his ultimate can one-tap you as well. This often makes it feel awful to play against. Your biggest counterplay option is CC him in order to kill him or to avoid his after image altogether. Overall, this ability is pretty cool from a lore and gameplay perspective, but when it comes to playing against it, you'll likely be frustrated. Next up on our list, we've got Camille, the Steel Shadow. This powerful duelist looks to eliminate her opponents through high mobility and sheer unblockable damage. While she may seem like a fighter, most people would argue she has the damage and mobility to be an assassin. With an ability that deals a significant amount of true damage, Camille is not a force to be underestimated. With that in mind, we're here to talk about her ultimate, the Hextech Ultimatum. While this ability may seem weak with her Q to follow it up, it's still a really cool and impactful ultimate. When cast, Camille hops into the air and becomes invulnerable. Upon landing on her target, she will disrupt any channels they have and will reveal them. Afterwards, all enemies near her target will be knocked away. Her primary target cannot escape the zone and while within it, they will take additional magic damage based on the target's current HP. This ultimate ability feels fairly unique because it's a way to isolate a target in a boxing ring-esque area. It can be compared to Mordekaiser's ultimate, but Camille's offers a bit more teamfight displacement. Overall, playing against this ability doesn't necessarily feel unfair, but it is a bit unfun. She's able to dive past your entire team, dodge attacks for a split second, and she flies towards you, then she can nearly one-tap you with the bonus damage. All in all, it's a cool ability that can be countered by pulling her out of the ring, and we appreciate it, because unlike her Q, it's not broken. Before we continue on to the rest of our list, we want to remind you all to check us out at ProGuides.com. With our new $7.99 monthly subscription, you can take your gameplay to the next level with some brand new course and bootcamp content. If courses and lessons aren't your thing, don't worry. We have challenger level coaches that are available 24-7 to help you out. As a member, you'll even get a 10% coaching discount. So what are you waiting for? Go check us out and join the Pro Guides family. Nonetheless, let's not waste any more time and dive back into the video. Pulling us back in, we've got Garen, the Might of Demacia. This juggernaut is the embodiment of a simple champion within the League of Legends roster. His kit doesn't feature any complex mechanics and his overall playstyle is simple. Garen looks to run at his target, silence them, spin on top of them, and then uses his ultimate to execute them. Speaking of his ultimate, Demacian Justice is an incredibly powerful although simple ability. The ultimate is a point and click with decent range on it. Upon casting it, Garen will summon a heavenly sword to smite his enemy. As it descends onto them, it'll deal true damage based on the target's missing health. While many abilities in the game offer a type of execute, they rarely offer as both true damage and as a point and click ability. The simplicity of this attack fits Garen completely, but when playing against him, it can often feel like you're destined to lose half your health bar to a giant sword of true damage. Overall, this ability is decent, easy to use, fits his personality, but feels pretty obnoxious to face. Your only real counter is to stay away from his ultimate range and avoid getting low HP near him in the first place. 
Next up on our list, we've got Seraphine, the starry-eyed songstress. Seraphine was made with the intent of being both a strong AP mage and a utility-based enchantress. Upon release, she quickly became one of the most hated champions due to her extremely vibrant personality and off-putting persona compared to the rest of the champion roster. Besides the lore building up a ton of hate for Seraphine, her abilities didn't help much either. All of them are extremely powerful and offer high DPS and or utility, but nothing can truly compare to the monstrosity that is her ultimate. Encore is Seraphine's ultimate ability, and it can be single-handedly counted as one of the best abilities in the game. When cast, she projects a big AoE spell that deals magic damage to enemies hit, reveals them, slows them, and charms them. This essentially made it a significantly better Nami ultimate. To add to this, Riot decided that her ultimate should extend its range upon hitting an ally or enemy. This means that Seraphine could ult her tank and would end up hitting the enemy's backline. Overall, Seraphine's ultimate feels like a revamped Nami ultimate that nearly every player hates to play against. While it does fit her lore and personality well, it is sure to make you rage as it crosses three screens to hit you. Your best bet to counter it is to either cleanse it or keep it in mind so you can dodge it. Moving on to our next champion, we've got Renata the Chem Baroness. Renata revolutionized the enchanter role by bringing a darker theme to it. Unlike Seraphine, rather than using pretty songs and colors to empower her allies, Renata uses chemicals and power to force both her allies and the enemy to bend to her every whim. While she does offer an incredibly strong kit, we're here to focus on her ultimate. Hostile Takeover is when Renata takes a hint from Nami and Seraphine and launches a large wave projectile. These clouds of chemicals slowly travel towards the enemy, and upon hitting them, they become Berserk. Berserk units gain bonus attack speed size and will focus allied champions. This ability can be incredibly powerful during teamfights as it not only CCs everyone, but if a marksman or auto attack based champion gets hit with it, they'll likely kill their entire team. As an ability, her ultimate feels really good to use and truly matches the dark manipulation that Renata uses in her lore. It offers decent counterplay through things like windwall, cleanse, and even by simply picking a mage. Overall, this ability doesn't feel annoying to play against and is honestly a cool concept. Just make sure you don't have a Fed Master Yi on your team when facing her. Next on our list, we've got Kane, the Shadow Reaper. This unique skirmisher provides a never-before-seen mechanic of turning into a gameplay-changing form once per game. While other champions can do so, it's usually to synergize with their previous forms before they swap back. Kane is able to choose Rost in order to shred tanks, offer crowd control, and be a frontliner. He can also become a Shadow Assassin, where he can easily move around the map and catch enemies off guard. While a lot of Kane's kit makes players upset, from a gameplay point of view, nothing is quite as obnoxious as his ultimate. With Umbral Trespass, Kane is able to enter an enemy champion after dealing damage to them. Upon entering them, he is untargetable for two and a half seconds. Depending on what form Kane chose, there are additional effects. As Rost, Kane deals bonus max HP damage to the enemy and will heal a significant amount based on the enemy's health. As Shadow Assassin, Kane deals additional damage, resets his passive damage bonus, and the cast range of his ultimate is significantly increased. Overall, this ability feels frustrating to play against because Kane gets to stall fights, wait for cooldowns, dodge key abilities, and so much more. Now before we move on to our final ultimates, let's not forget about our favorite pro guides tradition. Today we want to ask you all, what do you think is the most frustrating ability in the game? Regardless of what it may be, make sure to let us know in the comments section down below. Now let's continue on to our last few ultimates and dive right in. Pulling us back into the video, we've got Kiana, the Empress of the Elements. This champion easily became one of the most hated yet fun to play assassins in the game. She offers extremely fast paced combos and can wipe entire teams with skillful finesse. Although, she is infamous for her ability to stall fights with her invisible grass projectile. While Kiana is both cool to play yet annoying to play against, nothing really stands out more than her ultimate, Supreme Display of Talent, which is a wild ability that shocks us with the fact that it made it past playtesting. When cast, Kiana sends a Wind Blast in the target direction, knocking up enemies' hit. Upon hitting terrain, it'll send a Shockwave that will deal physical damage, reveal the enemy, and stun them. 
Depending on the terrain hit, it will expand into a different unique effect. This ability is extremely powerful because it's able to single-handedly hit everyone at an objective. Overall, Kiana as a champion can feel stylish but unfair. When it comes to her ultimate though, it seems like Riot just wanted to give her an ability that secured the retaking of an objective. Nothing can really compare to her ulting river, hitting the objective pit, then hitting everyone inside and around it. Moving on, we've got Keisante, the pride of Nazuma. Being one of Riot's newest champions, it is to no one's surprise that he is a bit broken. Offering a versatile kit with high max HP damage values and overall great survivability, he's a force to be reckoned with. Closely matching Riot's 200 year quota, his ultimate, All Out, offers a massive wall of text. In short, Keisante picks a target and sends them flying a short distance. Should this target hit terrain, they will be carried across its entire distance. Upon landing, they take additional damage and Keisante enters All Out, which increases his overall damage and swaps his abilities to be more offensive. While this ability looks cool and is fairly unique, it can feel a bit annoying to play against. Keisante gaining bonus damage isn't even the problem, as he also becomes a bit squishier. The biggest problem with this ultimate is that it allows Keisante to completely isolate an enemy without suffering any consequences. The biggest counterplay is to avoid walls, but with how far it launches you, it can feel impossible to do so mid to late game. Bringing us closer to the end of the video, we've got Fiora, the Grand Duelist. Fiora has earned her reputation as one of the best duelists in the game. While it is fitting for her lore, it can also feel a bit annoying to play against. That being said, we'll talk about the unfairness of her base kit another time. Taking a look at her ultimate ability, Grand Challenge, we can see where Fiora has a ton of power. Upon casting her ultimate, Fiora marks her target with four vitals. The movement speed gained from these vitals is increased. Not only do these vitals deal a good portion of true damage, but they also heal her. Once Fiora successfully pops all four vitals or the target is slain, she will create a large victory zone. This zone provides a massive heal to her and her allies. It's essentially a better version of Janna's ultimate, although without the displacement. Overall, this ultimate is cool thematically for Fiora, and while it can't feel a bit unfair at times, it's honestly a cool yet basic ability concept. Your best counterplay is to hug a wall so that she can't just pop one to two of the vitals. Last but certainly not least, we've got Silas, the Unshackled. Since his release, Silas has remained a problematic champion due to his powerful sustain and damage from his basic abilities. That being said, the sheer amount of power he has from his ultimate can be game-changing. While his ultimate hijack isn't necessarily unique by any means, it's still a cool one to use. Upon casting, Silas launches his chains at a target enemy champion. Afterwards, he will gain a copy of their ultimate ability that will gain its own AP scalings for his own use. While it may seem odd to have Silas on this list, since his ultimate depends on the enemies, it is important to note that this is extremely versatile. In some team comps, he can steal a Galio ultimate to rotate to help his team. Silas can take over a Malphite ultimate to one-shot the enemy backline with his AP scaling. He can even steal Alistar's ultimate to become a frontline tank for his team. Overall, Silas's ultimate is fun to use and doesn't feel bad playing against. Your biggest counter, however, is really going to be avoiding picking powerful ultimates versus him. And that sums up our video for today. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to join our Pro Guides family over at ProGuides.com. We offer exclusive giveaways and classes that you just won't catch anywhere else. So stay tuned and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next one. And as always, good luck on the Rift.